What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Sounds Heavy Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl, and with me today is Trey. We haven't been here in a while. There's a lot that's happened. Yeah, man. A lot, a lot of a lot of stuff. A lot of life stuff. Yeah. You know? uh, but we are here today recording to promote and talk about our latest single our latest single that's a really old song oh, really <laughs> <laughs> i, I kind of feel guilty whenever i um <laughs> when i promote it as our new single because yeah. even though it's new it's technically old yeah so it feels a little misleading so i have a really hard time like going well dang is it new is it old it's new old <laughs> I, I mean technically it is a new single because we never release singles Yep. back when we were uh playing live yep you know so we, a, when we never released albums either so it's an <laughs> old song from the ep but it's new version because we've changed a lot of stuff you know? yeah yeah we, ch- we changed some stuff on the track we changed the way i did some of the vocals changed some um, guitar parts and the re-recording process i mean we talked about it a couple weeks ago um well, probably a couple months ago at this yeah, point. Ago now, <laughs> yeah. We talked about it on one of the podcasts with with uh, Luis just about the recording process, and this was the song we were talking about. Yeah, um, just redoing some stuff and yeah. you know have, having a good time with it, making it sound better, making it sound heavier. You know, what's crazy is we talk we released that show two months ago, so we've been sitting on this track for two months or longer. I mean, instrumentally for way longer. Yeah. But then we got a, a lyric video made. So um, by the time you're hearing this podcast, the video will be live on our YouTube. The lyric video will be out. Uh, we uh, hired Poseidon Media to do the video. They did the Treehouse Burning Suffocate video that I thought was really good. Yep. Uh, we got Josh Adams to do the art for this video. So we got you know the assets and stuff from him. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. Yeah. I, th- I think it's a pretty solid... Uh lyric video i mean especially since it's our first one yep you know and uh i I like the i know there's things i'll do different next time you know like i'll be more prepared asset wise but like uh you know just looking at it the first time i watched it i was like okay that's pretty good and then i watched it again and i watched it again and then i showed it to my wife and kids and they're like oh wow that's really good yeah and they're like what were you expecting i'm like i don't know i like i've seen (laughs) so I, I, i watched so many lyric videos and then, like, got quotes from all these different companies and all these yeah. different people. And I liked Poseidon Media's work the best. Right. So, um, you know, and then the, the theme that I wanted to go with, and, and maybe you, you noticed it, I don't know, but when I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, that, the song is called Creator. Yep. So I really wanted to have some sort of, like, creation feel to it. Yeah. And so I was like, I wanted some sort of vine, you know, like something that could be... Yeah vines and roots and yeah something yeah. you know and then uh and and what we got you know the art wise was really cool yep and not what i had in my head but there's 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 vines and there's growth and there's uh, blood and it looks like like a blood splatter like a little mm-hmm. paint of red in there which is what I'd, i asked for that yeah which that, that reminded me of uh it's an old chariot song i can't remember what the song is called but uh there's a part where scoggin screams uh if there's blood on the roots then there's blood on the branches it made me think of that there you go because I think, I think the lyric video overall uh the fonts and the artwork uh, I, I didn't know what to expect at all because you had you had dealt with all that yep. and and getting that stuff transferred over to uh, Poseidon Media or whatever and like you know watching it initially I was kind of like well this makes it seem kind of dark yeah you know <laughs> um, which I mean lyrically the song is not really meant to be dark so much as as it's just meant to be kind of a an in your face proclamation mm-hmm. but I think for the sake of artwork because uh, I think that's the way a lot of v- lyric videos uh, go nowadays is like it's 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 not necessarily got anything to do with the song. It's just got to do with like how cool is the artwork, yeah. how much can it captivate your attention while you're reading lyrics and stuff like that. Heck yeah. So, and I think it does a very good job of that. I'm pretty pleased with it, and and that's one of those projects that like uh, I didn't do a lot of consulting with you guys on. It mm-hmm. was kind of like I just want to make this thing happen, and you and I see each other every day at work and we talk, so it's easy for you and I to con- converse back and forth. With Luis, we don't see him that often. Often, so I have to throw a message out there between us, wait on a response, yep. and then you don't always get inflection and tone and all those things in there. And we said this before with him on the show. It was like, 
a lot of our conversations is like a scatter shot of information. Yeah. It's like, here's all the things I've been doing. Bah, 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 you yeah. know? And it's like, are you on board? I sure hope so. Because, <laughs> and yeah. so with this, I was just like, it would be easier if I just grabbed the, the, uh, designer that I wanted to use the company I wanted to use, which I mean, I not, I've, feel filtered that to you guys. I was like, yeah, Hey, yeah. here, here's, here's, here's some people, here's some quotes, blah, blah, blah. Here's kind of what I had in mind. What do you guys like? I already had in mind what I like. And then I, I got the quotes back from everything. And he was yep. the most reasonable. Um, he or she or whoever uh, beside me, was the most reasonable. Yep. Um, so I definitely recommend them to anyone listening. You know, a lot yeah. of the, there's me a lot of for the price. The product is great, man. Oh, absolutely. It's really good. Um, and that was the thing too, was he was my, or they were my number one choice. And they came in way cheaper than a lot of these other yahoos who were wanting yeah. several hundred dollars more for these little uh, videos that I could do myself. Right. And that was something I wanted. I was like, I wanted it to be something that I couldn't do myself. Yeah. Well, and, and in truth, so, some of these like really high production lyric videos, I mean, the, these are guys that probably have, you know, $40 a month subscriptions to editing software oh, and services yeah, and stuff, stuff like that. And so it's of, like, yeah. I mean, these, these, you know the 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 signed bands and the bands that have you know fifty thousand followers on Spotify right, and all this kind right. of stuff I mean they're they're probably putting a couple grand into into just a lyric video right you know and then they can contact somebody like Darren Doan to do a music video and right, you know right, right, pay however right. many thousands of dollars he yeah. charges you know and stuff like that and you know it's all well and good but I mean yeah. uh, lyric videos man I, I think it's crazy because like lyric videos used to not be a thing no it was kind of like uh, what are the lyrics to your song and they're just in a little booklet in the CD, and that's that's how you find out stuff. And then you know all the lyric websites started popping up: dark lyrics, metal lyrics, yep. lyric AZ stuff like that. And um, you know, if you wanted to find the lyrics to songs that you couldn't quite understand, maybe you could find them on some obscure lyric website. But then all of a sudden, like it was like the music industry saw that uh, the price of everything was going up. You know, mm -hmm. because because music video production was getting very good yep. and, and very neat and and all this kind of stuff and like lyric videos became a thing because you can you can animate a, animate some slides animate some uh, yep. some images you know and, and just make it look cool and and over the years man over the past like six seven years lyric videos have just been really neat. Well, you know, there's been a lot of videos that are just really cool. I think a lot of things that contributed to that is is YouTube. Yeah. You know, like oh yeah. One thing I noticed it was almost like an overnight thing maybe it's just because that's when i noticed it but it was like hey wait a minute people were putting all people people were putting bands music on on youtube and it was getting pulled down it was getting pulled yeah. down it was getting pulled down and then one day it was like all the bands just released all their music on youtube yep. as a platform mm -hmm. so then i started noticing that like oh lyric videos is kind of the new that little intermediate step between just having a static graphic which yeah. is what i've been doing with our stuff right and then having a full-on music video which we've hired companies before and have been not pleased with right if you go to our youtube we have uh, like a couple playlists set up one of them is music videos this will be a part of it but there is the uh, live video for chicago typewriter the yeah. troy browder shot which i think is good but the my biggest gripe is the song quality wasn't great you yeah know, there's parts where the audio peaks and like that is just such a an ear sore for me it right. was a rough recording ep whatever but and then there's parts where like the the music doesn't line up with what the guitar player's fingers are doing <laughs> <laughs> and that is yeah. like that drives me nuts yeah and there's a part in there where where joy is doing like a little bit of a lead and it's i think like a chunky breakdown ish riff or whatever I'm like that's right. not right that's not <laughs> that's not right but yeah. overall that was that was our first ever video mm -hmm. which was 2007 2008 when that it came was, out somewhere. yeah it was a long, long time, ago. time ago yeah and then um we hired that one company to do the sovereign video for the be still ep which was just awful. Like it was just cringy and awful, and I had strep throat. Hey, I'm, I'm embarrassed that that video is up. It's pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. Honestly, like it's one of those things that I've kind of embraced it at this point, and yeah. I just tried to put it in the playlist, but just right. bury it. In you. Like it's there, it exists, whatever. But the green screen footage was the coolest part. Yeah, and it didn't get included. But here's what I I found: the original disc with the green screen footage on there. Okay. 
We could redo that video ourselves. <laughs> it's still not going to be a great video. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> I don't know, I, dude. There was there was so much nitpicking after we after we put out that video, and I think I don't think we were at least I wasn't ready for all the nitpicking, you know, because it's like there's so much stuff that you need to think about mm-hmm. to put a music video together just to just to make sure that you don't look stupid. Oh yeah, well we and, and we, we, did we look really stupid. We didn't we didn't do any of the prep work. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, it'd be cool if we were in the woods. Yeah, and it'd be cool if we were in like this kind of warehouse looking thing. And and we did both of those things, but it's just and it, then the guy was like, great. man, y'all need to walk up this way. And we yeah. looked really stupid <laughs> walking up the thing. And, yeah, and then he randomly just had like a like a flash of like a wooden cross with like a sash on or whatever. I was yeah. like, this just seems like a jumbled up mess of things. Yeah, like none of this. Oh yeah, you know, worked and. I don't know. Plus, I was extremely sick when we filmed that. Like, yeah. Well, and for some for some reason, we put we put I guitar cabinets old. and a drum set in the wood. in the video, right? <laughs> but then I didn't have a microphone, <laughs> and so I don't know what to do with my hands when I'm screaming because yeah. normally I've got both of my hands wrapped around a microphone. Yeah, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm like, people have to see my open mouth. This mm-hmm. is this is really weird, yep. you know. Yep. And that's definitely that's definitely what happened. And it was just, yeah. That was it. Was a learning experience for sure. Well, point being, I can't wait till we re-release that song. Yes. Uh, whether or not we do any kind of uh, of media footage with it or oh, not, yeah, 100%. Like, that song's too know. good not to do. So <laughs> it'll be it'll be a good song to make up for. It's always one of my favorites. It's a good one. So and that one's not far from finished. So yep. uh, that one will definitely. And that's something else we need to. One night we need to sit down with Luis and do a, a whole talk just about the the album, kind of like the. I guess the general concept of it, you know, once yeah. we have all the the stuff together, because cause with this, you know, this song with the Creator, yeah, I got to thinking, and I mean, we talked you know, off mic about just like the creation of this song, and yeah. like we wrote this song like in two thousand nine ish, two thousand ten ish, something like that. I couldn't remember the exact dates because yeah, somewhere around there, the the timeline was Honcho left, Stephen came in for a little while, and. Steven and Kyle both came in. We wrote a couple songs with them and then they bounced. Yep. And then we were just like, what are we going to do? And you were like, well, I'll go to vocals. Luis, who had been producing our music, recording our EPs and st- you know, some of our EPs and stuff at the time came in on drums. And I had been going through this phase, which when Ninja Loop started, I was playing seven string guitars and drop a heavily influenced by bands like corn well then whenever me you and justin joy got together he was completely against seven string guitars yep. or tuning down anything yeah. past drop d <laughs> so, so it was like a huge compromise me you guys you know all of us starting a band together and oh, me, yeah yeah you know, me going but whatever I, I you know but one of the things in the back of my mind i've said this before on the show was that like i always wanted us to get back to seven strings drop eight like that mm-hmm. was where my heart was so you know we're at this crucial change and i've been in my room in my music room at the time just jamming you know with my seven string and my little line six combo Mm -hmm. and i remember distinctly you coming over one day and i I think i was showing you riffs from sovereign i think realistically that like in my mind i can't remember exactly when the creator was was written right you know guitar wise at least but i remember showing you riffs i was playing on my seven string rg seven three one you know yep and i was like it was just heavy it was bouncy and i remember pitching and i was like your vocals are so much deeper and heavier than the other guys yeah i was like i think we need to match that with the guitars yeah well and i love drop drop guitars man oh man yeah love drop guitars and it, and then unfortunately i feel like if you listen to the eps i feel like guitar wise i was a lot more creative and a lot more I don't want to say technical, but I just did different stuff. I feel yeah. like my range was better, and I had like a my I hit hit my stride with those songs. When we dropped the sevens, I slowed a lot of stuff down and got a little more chunky and bouncy with the riffs, yep. and really tried to hinge on that just the heaviness. Well, I think that that's the first time we actually tried to start writing without a second guitarist. Yep. And I think that was that was a part of the big influence too. There is because our our music changed not just because our vocalist changed, but because like our our entire lineup changed. You know, all of a sudden we had a different drummer who's different than than me. Mm-hmm. You know, on the drums, and we have a different vocalist, who of course, I mean, like you just said, I, I do things in a, a bit of a lower register than than the yep. other guys that we had, and um, and we just have one guitarist. Yep. You know, like it was it was just you. 
Which is funny because when I think back about it, like writing the songs, like Justin and I, the way we wrote together was like I would fart out a riff, you would throw out a beat, mm-hmm. and then he would put a layer on top of it. Yep. And it was like a, like a, like a sandwich. Yeah. You know, and then it was like it just worked that way. Mm-hmm. And Justin, I don't not to take away from him. I don't remember a whole lot of things that he like riffs that he came up with aside from the the leads and the you know the the, the harmony stuff that he would put on there. Yeah. And then of course the occasional breakdown rhythms and things like that. But I, a lot of our breakdowns you came up with because we would be here's our riff tray and then you would carry us into the breakdown. So mm-hmm. it was different because this time I had to figure out like okay how do I write things that you only need one guy for. Yeah. Because before we would have these harmonies and we would have these extra pieces that would th- make the music sound much more, you know, bigger and, you know, diverse, I guess you'd say. And it was just better. I mean, I like the that stuff together. I love when two guitar players work together mm-hmm. and write pieces that work together. But whenever you, it was just me with a seven string guitar, I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's stuff that we can do in the recordings that we couldn't do live. So yeah but either way it was uh it was it was interesting it was an interesting time and um yeah we we made it work and then i know i really want to spend time with you you know talking about the lyrics but as far as like music stuff goes i remember we started off in my room and then we had gotten that really nice electric kit yep and we had set up in my open room upstairs and we would riff and we would jam in there and then we got to where we were practicing in the church that we ultimately recorded the Be Still EP in. Yeah. And outside of that, I don't have a ton of memories of writing this stuff just because we had young kids. Yeah. A lot of life changes. And we're still <laughs> playing a crap ton of shows. Yeah. I, that that whole that whole time period is really fuzzy for me because um, we've I mean we've practiced in so many different places. Mm-hmm. I, I, the best place that we ever had was in a storage unit. But eventually, that particular company that that was like a massive storage unit company, yeah, um, you know, made it a part of their um, corporate policy that, mm-hmm. that you you weren't allowed to to rent to bands anymore for the purposes of them practicing. Because when, when we when we were at the storage unit, there were like four or five other bands that would practice at the storage unit too. And sometimes we'd you know cross paths yeah. or here all you know. hang out, go check each other's practices <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's you know stuff like that was awesome because you you could be in that space and make as much noise as you wanted to we had access to electricity you know what i'm saying and all of it was paid for we just paid our fee every month a little monthly fee and then we but but then you start having to change places i remember we practiced at uh the church you were you were a pastor at there for a little bit um and got the police called on us most of the time uh if we showed up for practice the cops would show up about 20 minutes later you know and that's just that's how things would go, and then we we practiced at another one of your churches down the street from that one uh, for a long time, and that one wasn't bad because we used to we used to run shows in there, and nobody had a big problem with it, and you know, and stuff like that. But uh, we practiced in my house at one point, and we yeah. practiced in uh, one of your game. houses at one point. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know, man. There's so many different places, and then and then when the chaos of like changing the lineup came, you know, I just. I can't remember a whole lot, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what what what's crazy to me though, and, and I just remembered this like just now while we're sitting here. But the, the when I quit Ninja Loot, it was in the same room that we used to practice in, uh, in in the house that you used to have back before you bought your big house in the uh, yeah. in, in the neighborhood or whatever, um, because Frosty was living in that house, and that's where we were like jamming after uh, yeah. after, after you weren't in the band anymore. That's right. So what's yeah. funny is that <laughs> we recorded. Oh my gosh! The Chicago mm-hmm. typewriter, all that. Yeah, that, we recorded that whole, in that yeah. back room because we had put all the moving blankets on the walls yeah. and soundproof the room, yeah. and we and something happened, and we hit. We had moving blankets up around the drums, right, trying to dampen the cymbals. <laughs> and I remember us recording a ton of stuff, and then somebody hit the back of the computer. Something happened, and it fried the hard drive. Yep. We lost all of our stems, all of our recordings. Yeah. A whole a whole day's worth of work. <laughs> it was me, you, and Honcho, and I think maybe Frosty. Yeah. But gosh, dude, 
That was one of the most disheartening. <laughs> I was like, we're not doing this again. Um, we're that, well, that's, the, that's the struggle of being in like a, a, a quote unquote local band, right? Is, yeah. is you have to, you have to have a practice space. And if you don't have a band member who has, you know, 40 acres out in the middle of nowhere, then good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you're just going to have to move from place to place as the cops get called on you. Dude, yes. And, and they pretty much got called on us everywhere. Yeah. Um, cause even when we practice in the sanctuary at the skag, we, you know, yep. after a certain point. Mm-hmm. But that's just uh, that's part of the fun of it, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because my kids were asking me the other day, like, "Daddy, have you ever committed a crime?" I was like, "Well, not intentionally." I was like, "But I've like <laughs> sped and stuff, and yeah. I've gotten hit with seat belt violations, you know, real, real, you know, real hardcore stuff or whatever." Yeah. And they're like, "No, like, have you ever committed a crime like on purpose?" And I thought about it, and I was like, well, no, actually, I haven't. And then now I'm thinking again, talking about this. I'm like, well, actually, mm-hmm. technically, we were <laughs> P- playing music playing when music. we knew it was unwanted, and, <laughs> and we're going to get the cops called. Yeah, <laughs> we, we knew they were coming. Yeah. <laughs> and, they were, and then, you know what, though? We never had a run-in with a cop that was a real douche, you know? Yeah. They were just oh, like, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, you got to turn down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, you can't turn the drums down. Which I will say, when we had that electric kit at my one, uh, one of my houses, that was probably like the, I don't know about the best time to rec- of writing, but I do remember that being the simplest. You just throw the headphones on yeah. and then everyone can hear everything. And you can work it. And I do remember that was a crucial part of Be Still, but I just don't remember what songs came in what order, Yeah, which sucks because that is the part of the stories that I wanted to tell the most. Right. <laughs> and, I ha- and I think part of it is just because I don't remember. And I know that like, I love when bands talk about like the inspiration behind a song and like every band does it different. Some guys, some jam bands get together and they all make a bunch of noise till the song comes together. Some guys get in the studio like, all right, we got two weeks. Let's make it happen. Yeah. You know, and for us, it was a kind of a combination. It would be like, we have shows several times every week. So we're going to run through the set and then we'll write, you know, or we, okay. We ran through the set. We made sure we were rehearsed. We're practiced now. Does anybody have any noise to make to yeah. make a riff? So, but uh, but you know, with the lyric video being kind of the focus of us talking here, I right. kind of wanted to turn over to you and just let you kind of talk about the inspiration of the lyrics. You know what I've been doing since I have all of them. Yeah, is I've been sending. There's a couple like there's a Beyond the Grave. Those guys from that website were on the show. Yep. I sent them the MP3 and then the lyrics and then. Um, the uh, host of Divine Aggression Radio, I sent him the MP3 and the lyrics. And then there's this guy named Matt who runs uh, Straight to the Core podcast. I sent him the MP3 and the lyrics. And there's a handful of, of streamers I've reached out to, my brother being one of them. Yep. He's got a pretty decent little stream he does. So he's going to do a reaction video on his stream tomorrow night um, as of this recording. And uh, and so I've been sending everyone the lyrics, you know, yeah. and obviously you have them because they're a lyric video, yeah. but it's been pretty cool, you know, as a believer to, it's like, I'm sending you like some pretty heavy stuff, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that whether you're a believer or not a believer, yeah. you now are, you're coming into contact with this. You have to ultimately make a decision whether you just kind of read it and whatever, ignore it, or, you know, hopefully someone will read these lyrics and go, dang, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I just kind of want to turn it over to you and just kind of know, yeah, well, know what I, your story is with it. So, when we started, when we started writing with me as the vocalist, and you were the only guitarist, I was going through a period in my life that was like there weren't like a, a lot of big theological changes going on, but I was becoming more bold about you know the things that I believed and and the things that I wanted to say to people and I remember one of the one of the points that I brought up um before Mike ever left was like you know I had started watching bands like Four Today and uh artists like Lecrae you know mm-hmm. uh, who, who's in the hip hop realm of things but uh, I'd gone to some of these shows and like just listen to these guys you know preach what they believe without any shame without any hesitation you know and it was it was a a, a full um, like gospel presentation, you know, and a lot of these things. And I remember like wanting that, you know, I, m- I remember, uh, us sitting upstairs at my house one night after practice, you know, talking the whole band just about how, like, we could probably be a little more straightforward about the things that we believe and all this kind of stuff. And that, I, I remember it causing some rifts at, at, yeah. at the moment, but, uh, eventually, 
uh, when I became a vocalist, it was kind of like, all right, well, here's my opportunity, right? <laughs> like yeah. if, if, if I'm feeling like I, I need to be a little more loud, a little more proud, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying, about the things that I believed in, uh, here's the chance to do it. And, and sure enough, first time out the gate, it was a, like a fall in the face. And we've talked about that before, but, but, uh, <laughs> it was pretty rough, but like I, I, I was going through that kind of a change and, you know, we were trying to write some music that was going to be mine, right? Like lyrics that were going to be mine. And, um, uh, so we started writing some of these songs, including creator. Uh, I, w- I was listening to a lot of preachers, a lot of, content and stuff like that that was all like very heavily heavily theological based you know and so it was like i'd still listen to music and stuff but i was i was working here where we work now and i was listening to a ton of sermons and a ton mm-hmm. of podcasts and and things like that they were all just like bible and theology and so it was it was it was sculpting my brain in a certain way so that when it was like okay well, let's let's write these songs and let's put out something fairly quick you know what i'm saying with me as the vocalist just to kind of make the transition and solidify it yep. uh i remember thinking like oh man, I mean i listened to this guy named uh paul washer a ton and uh he was always talking about the attributes of god you know and uh of course attributes of god being stuff like like sovereignty he is the creator he is our judge you know and and all these ended up being song titles for us um because i was like well let's just write a couple of songs about some of the attributes of god and so um i remember uh around the time that we we were working on creator right and I, I, I say this because it had to be this way, but around the time we were working on Creator, I had been introduced to a, a band called Born of Osiris, and um, they had they had released an, an an album a couple years, you know, prior to me being introduced to them. Um, but on the album, they had a song that's called "Bow Down," and the whole thing it just starts out it's like "F and Bow Down," and it's like just this really fast technical mm-hmm. song, you know. And, and I don't even know all the stuff that they were talking about. I just remember we all listened to it, and it's like bow down to what like what what's your problem you know like and and it was it, you know you think back on it it's like you'd go to these shows and you'd see these dudes like just shredding you know and, and you'd get some people doing the spirit fingers while people were yeah. shredding and then you get other people doing the whole like faux bow down thing where you like you're yeah. like bowing down to somebody's skill on the guitar and, and i just remember being inundated with like all this imagery and like and they also all this had, stuff like white chapel on them yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah say some really stupid <laughs> cliche like yeah welcome uh, to the gates of hell yeah and it's like, okay cool. oh and they were tough when they did it too yeah. man but it's like you know that's well that's the kind of stuff we were we were in the midst of you know what yeah. i'm saying like we played with bands like that that were like you know what i'm saying this is what we're about and we're not we're not christians and we're not whatever right. I mean, you know that is what it is like i enjoy playing with satanic bands as much as i enjoy playing with christian bands most of the time if we're just talking music and like show you know there's a camaraderie that christians have with one another that you know i can't really have with a satanist but yeah <laughs> but uh that, that, that's neither here nor there but like i remember just being surrounded by this kind of stuff and, and like that song in particular i was like you, you know as, mu- as much as I, I don't have any clue what he's talking about and i know it's not about god you know i was like that's a really aggressive way to start a song and so i remember that's that's where the idea started was like well you know i, I believe in the god of the bible being the creator of the universe you know and like it, th- there's a passage specifically that i heard uh mentioned a lot and this is uh romans chapter one i'm not trying to bobble everybody out but like romans chapter one it says for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because that which is known about god is evident within them for god made it evident to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. So they are without excuse. For the, even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Right? And like, I had heard a whole bunch of preaching on that particular passage, and it, and it has some, some weight with me apologetically. I'm not trying to use Christianese here, but like, this is, <laughs> I, I still run in these circles, right? right I right, still right, think right, in these, right. in these realms or whatever. But like, I remember thinking like, it's so evident that like God exists. And that was, you know, when we'd be on stage and I'd go to give our, our gospel presentation or whatever, um, that's a lot of times, that's how I would kind of break it in. You know, I, I would open up and I would say, there is a God, he exists and he made you. 
and that would be the basis upon which I presented the rest of everything else, you know, which mm-hmm. was usually a, a five or six minute, you know, just straight gospel presentation, whatever. Um, but like the aspect of God being the creator carries such a weight because the scripture says that you're able to look at the things around you and know that God exists. And in fact, that you're without excuse for um, giving thanks to God and honoring him as God. And so I'm, I'm here, I'm like Mr. Tough Guy Christian, you know what I'm saying, wanting to write tough music and tough lyrics and stuff. And so I'm like, bow down, bow down to God because he made you and you don't have an excuse not to bow down to him. Right. And that's like that, the whole song, that's what the whole thing is about, you know, because it's just like, um, he, he created you, you don't have an excuse for being an unbelief. And if you are in unbelief, you need to repent. <laughs> and that's the kind of, you know, it was like, it was like this hard case that, yeah. that I wanted to put forward. And there it is lyrically, you know? So the stuff we were writing, uh, I might, I might not speak to somebody in that same way. You know what I'm saying? As I was, I was able to write the music that we were writing at the time, especially something like this, because you, know, you walk up to some random person on the street and say, bow down to Jesus, man. And like, they're going to look at you like you're kind of weird and crazy or whatever. But uh, you say it in a song and it sounds tough because you open up a song. It's like, yep. bow down, you know, and, and well, dang, what are you tell you tell me to bow, like bow down on my knees to, to what, you know? Yep. And it's like, I'm going to tell you, to the Lord who made you, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know, man, I, I was so heavily influenced by people that were being bold in their faith. Thank you. And I wanted to emulate that, whether I was good at it or not. Like that's, that's where my brain was at. And so I wanted to try and be like that. And, um, I think in some ways I, I failed, you know, and then in other ways uh, I succeeded because there were nights where and we've talked about this before, but there, there were nights where you know, you get heckled from the stage for even bringing up Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, I, you know, you, this other band that just played, you know what I'm saying? They, they like, they got the devil horns and they're like, F God and all this kind of stuff. And like, I bring up Jesus for two minutes and it's a problem, you know? And so there was this clash that would happen. And I just remember being emboldened even more because you feel that little bit of resistance. You feel that little bit of rejection. You feel that little bit of, um, anxiety even you know what i'm saying when somebody's like challenging what you think but then you remember i'm in a freaking metal band like this is this is what this genre of music is, a, is about right you know what i'm saying it's about being aggressive it's about standing up for whatever you think whatever you believe you know what i'm saying and not giving a crap what anybody else thinks mm-hmm. you know and, and as much as i don't want to like emulate bad uh attitudes or anything like that like i just remember thinking well these guys can get up here and say you know, open up the pits of hell. I can get up and say, bow down to God, (laughs) you know? And and like, that's the, you know, that's where my head was at, man. And and that's, that's where those lyrics specifically came from. That's where the, that's where that whole EP came from. You know what I'm saying? Personally, but like theologically, that was, that was where that's rooted. Like God made you. And so you're able to see from the things that are around you that God made you. And so you don't have an excuse for not bowing down to him, you know? Heck yeah, dude. It's funny because you talk about being in that mindset of being bold and influenced by some of these other artists that were taking that avenue. And I'm like right there with you. I'm yeah. egging you on. I'm like, right. yeah, you freaking say it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there was a, even internally with our band, there were, you know, we were all on different pages. I've always felt like you and I were very, very similar in our walk and our mindset and our, you know, even theologically where you challenge a lot of the things that I think, you know, and, and, and I've always kind of seen, you know, both sides of a lot of the, of the Christian theology on things, you know? And so it's right. like, it's always been one of those things where you and I've worked really well and taught really well together. And so you're like, yeah, you, that day at your, at the log cabin, you had pitched getting a little bolder on stage and they had, yeah. made, you know, the vocalist at the time, a little uncomfortable because that's not who he was. Yeah. And I'm over here and like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's freaking do it. Yeah. Like, come <laughs> right. on. Like, that's, but that's what goes back to the day we started the band, 2006. Mm-hmm. The whole idea was you got all these bands out there spewing whatever they want. You know? Right. I was like, let's, let's just spew cool Christian stuff, you know, and actually be just be what we say. Yeah. And it just came so natural and so easy to us. And um, 
you know, and, and that didn't always work for everyone who played music with us. And yeah. we saw a lot of turnover because of that. And, oh, yeah. and sometimes, I don't know, maybe we didn't like take care of each other enough where it's like, yeah, you might be on, on the same level as what we're, what we're at. So I don't know. I don't, I don't ever feel like we said to anyone or like forced anyone to like rise to the occasion. Right. But it was kind of like, we're going to do this thing. Yeah. We just hope you guys can, you know. Yeah, well, I, I remember part, part of my mindset was like, we're going to be bold, and people are going to give us flack. If you're not okay with that, I mean, there's the door. Yeah. And I hate, hate to see you go, but, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stop. And, I, and and there's a part of me that regrets having that particular kind of attitude about it because, I mean, we played with some really talented people. and, mm-hmm. and, and people, great people. Yeah, some people that were just awesome friends and, and stuff like that. And I, and I think even friendships were hurt. Yeah. Um, with some of this stuff and it's just because we we were trying so hard to to match the things that we said lyrically and um on stage with like who we were you know and and i'm not saying that like you shouldn't do that with whatever it is that you believe i'm just saying that like um we didn't take into account that even people that share our beliefs aren't going to be on the same page with us right and when, when it comes to some of the bolder stuff and I really want to emphasize didn't take that into account, you yeah. know, because like that was my I don't I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, this yeah. is this yeah. is what we do. Yeah, this is what this we're is supposed we to are. do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and then when people are like, hey man, like I don't know that I want to do this anymore. I'm like, wow, like what? what do you yeah, mean? You're right. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know. And it was just kind of like, okay, well then you go do your thing. We're gonna keep doing this thing. Yeah. And, and I didn't. I don't. I don't want to say it in a mean way, but I didn't care. It was yeah. like you know. So, oh, you're down? Then we're let's go. If yeah. You're not down? Oh, that's cool too. But we're going to keep going up until we couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And um, you know, at the end of the day, I do feel like we did what we were supposed to do. Um, I think that looking back, hindsight, we could have maybe wrapped that package a little better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the big frustrations I had was that we would stop the music, stop the set. Yeah. And there was that one day we played in North Carolina. And we kept playing the music, and you're you like, you were into whatever you were saying, mm-hmm. but we couldn't hear you because we had a really crap. We didn't have a good PA that night, and I don't right. think you could hear yourself. And you're like, stop, <laughs> cut the music. I was like, I just don't remember that at all. <laughs> it was, oh man, we played. Uh, we were playing in North Carolina. We had like two or three days, and that was one of the spots. And okay. I think we might have been playing with. Uh, it wasn't embracing goodbye. It might have been Take Heart that night. I don't remember. Either way, it doesn't matter. But. uh I was like, man, like we had me and Luis were like freestyling and feeding off yeah. each other. And he was building it up. <laughs> yeah, and we we're getting ready to go, and then you're like, cut the music, and I was like, oh dang, we, <laughs> what we were, whatever was getting ready to happen next yeah. was about to be nasty. It's, I probably wouldn't do that nowadays. Yeah, I probably, probably wouldn't be like that. <laughs> well, yeah, if we did, if we did, you know, hit the stage again, I would really want to like take that presentation part. Yeah, oh yeah, and have it do something built into it, yeah. a song you know yeah. built into music yeah. even if it's just like we take a song and we just have this extended yeah. measure of it where things kind of turn down a little bit and give you yeah. a speaking space just because the whole stopping broke the momentum of the live shows oh yeah and i feel like that ultimately took us from being entertaining to that was where it was like okay here's the preaching part okay they're entertaining again let's do this yeah um, well, and it's, it's easier to get away with when you're um a different style of music Right, because mm-hmm. I remember, I remember specifically, I'd watch Lecrae, and I went to see him at North Greenville University, which is a Christian university. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, him stopping between every single song to preach something, you know what I'm saying, yeah. in his hour, hour and a half worth of set, you know what I'm saying, was not like abnormal, because yeah. it was like you're you're in front of a whole bunch of church people, you're in front of a whole bunch of people who are used to like listening to this stuff, and then we're all here because this is what we enjoy. Yep of your entertainment value you know what i'm saying it's like you can't do that with metal man it's just not no. it's, it's not built in you know like no. it, especially when you're playing these clubs and you got a you got anywhere from a 20 to a 35 minute set and you, part of that is is loading and unloading and stuff yeah. like that you know and it's like yeah. it, there's there's an easier way to to get what you want to say out and have it be um and i i'm not a pragmatist when it comes to this but have it be more palatable you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, with people, because if you got a little bit of music that just stays going, people aren't going to sit down, because we had that happen. You know what I'm saying, where people just, like, sit on the floor, and it's yep. like, oh, man, this, <laughs> oh, now everybody's bored. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> At least they weren't walking Dang. out, but when they walk out, that's when you leave, you lose you lose it. But yeah, we got, we're running out of time, so we got to land the plane. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just, you know, 
uh, overall, though, I think that I speak for the whole group. And I say I, we're pretty proud of the song. Oh yeah, the way it's come from the original EP recordings. Yes, where your voice breaks. Yep, um, where you were had been recording for hours that day with yep. with no no breaks. Yep, we spent a whole day recording the whole thing essentially almost live, yep. and then mixed it in a day. Yeah, we just it was a we broke all the rules to record that ep and it sounded like it yep and then we sent it off to somebody that spent a couple hundred dollars to have it mastered and it was just like we yeah. basically just got like we sent a turd out and got a polished turd back yeah. and i just remember like not being happy with it yeah so now to hear this song redone it's just like oh it's almost like vindication just internally it's like oh thank you yeah finally this is this is what that EP was supposed to sound yeah, like. Yeah, abs- absolutely that. So as for the album going forward, we are going to have a few more songs off the EP yep. that we'll make it on there. We're going to have some brand new songs. We've got brand new stuff that we are, you know, haven't even haven't unveiled yet. And I'm just really excited to have these songs kind of re-realized. Yep. And I had time to sit back and change the guitar parts and do little things that I think sound better. And man, I'm just... I've been actually trying not to listen to it until it releases so that like when I put it out and I start spamming people's pages <laughs> with it and I'm like promoting it in all the groups and stuff yeah. and that like I haven't already burnt myself out on because like Respect Issue I was like so excited about that song <laughs> yeah. that whenever I by the time I had put it out I had already listened to it hundreds of times yeah. and I was like you know I don't really want to hear the song anymore <laughs> so with this one with Creator I'm stoked. I hope that everyone who hears it is, you know, happy with it. And I mean, I can't wait for the next couple songs, you know, so. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. Like I said. Anything you want to add or say before we get out of here? No, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because not only is this self self recorded, you know what I'm saying? But we were able to change the things that we felt needed to be changed, you yep. know? And I, and I think that's, if the song doesn't mean anything to anybody else, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to you. It means yep. a lot to Luis. Um, just to have it out there and like um, done in a way that we're proud of and in a way that sounds decent, you know. That bass line, dude, is good. Fat. Yeah, it's really oh, good. It's so good. That's yeah. my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, uh, it, it there there were a couple parts vocally because it, this one I recorded in a couple hours. Uh, one single night, and and I added you know different layers, different vocal parts. But there's and I can't remember. Um, what the line is but there's just one part where i layered low vocals over low vocals and it it just made this nasty like almost like a pig squeal sound it was like it was really good you Uh, know and and i enjoyed it a lot the end of the song where you have the line and they say there is no and Mm -hmm. then it goes straight into god Mm -hmm. like that's not yeah that that was awesome too (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, and it's so funny because that's like a like progressively heavier breakdown from a mm-hmm. breakdown, but listening to the song, like the standout is the vocals on it. It's like, yeah, cool. There's a breakdown there, but dang, that yeah. vocal thing. So no, it, it was it's so so much better than the original recording because oh. the original recording, my my voice had not broken in yet as far as like actually doing this stuff and and you know n- now I'm actually like the struggle is now when I go in the studio. I have to warm up. I have to like get going before I can even start recording because my voice is not used to it anymore. Yeah, you know, yeah. I know I know the technique now, but I don't like I don't do it a lot, and so I have to like I have to mentally prepare. I have to physically prepare. I have to, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll take out my acoustic guitar and just just, just sing for a little while yeah. <laughs> before before I do <laughs> something like that. Up. Yeah. So, so I want to tell you this one thing before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, I was playing the song for my brother. Yeah. And he hasn't seen the video yet. So right. he's going to do it, but he has heard the song. We were riding down the road the other day, and I played it for him. And he's like, how did he get better after <laughs> six years? Yeah. Of, it's almost seven years of not being in a band right. and not screaming. Yeah, like, How did you get better than <laughs> the years previous, man? It's it's the rasp, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like the strain that it puts on my voice adds just a little bit of uh, something. I don't know. I, it's happened a couple times um, since, like, just stopping playing music like that. And uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's 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 something to say to my fatigued voice and what it adds to the <laughs> to the stuff. 
Awesome. So. Awesome. I'm excited. At the end of this episode, we will have Creator attached. You know, so far, um, the album's come along great. Still slower than I ever expected. Yep. And I knew it was going to be slow, but, you know, just the challenges that we faced. I think since the last time we recorded, I got COVID. I was out with that for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And then my grandfather passed away with COVID. Yeah. So now a lot of my free time has been tied up into helping my grandma and doing yard work and yeah. just kind of helping her cope and spending time with her, doing a lot of stuff over there. So unfortunately, we have a lot of other songs that are almost finished. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but it is what it is. We'll get there. And when the album's done, it'll be ready. It'll be good. And then we can start the next one. So, Yep. Well, <laughs> stay metal and listen to something that sounds heavy. There you and. Go. say there is no, no. no.